Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joy Grace, and today I have another episode in my One Week One palette series. Today we're using another Natasha Denona palette. This is the Gold palette. So this is super popular. It's been around for quite a long time, but as you can see, it is every shade and tone of gold that you would ever want. So this palette does not get enough love in my collection, but I do actually like it. You get some warmer tones. This is about as warm of a palette as I ever want to go, but you do get literally any type of gold from these yellow, uh, orangey golds to the, um, there's like some green golds. You've got some teals to complement all those tones. You've got some mustard yellow, and then you've got true golds and a lighter tone as well. You've got a myriad of different formulas. Um, this is like my favorite formula from Natasha Denona. Uh, she, you've got her metallics, you've got chroma crystals, you've got creamy mattes, um, just a wide range. And you can get, uh, if you use these colors lightly, in my opinion, they're more wearable for me every day, but you definitely get uh, enough glitter in here to amp up any kind of look into a nighttime going out look. So I really like this palette and I'm excited to test my creativity and show you at least five different looks that you can achieve with this palette. So this is spoiler alert look number one. So stay tuned if you're interested. Uh, make sure before you leave that you subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below and let me know what look is your favorite. I always enjoy receiving that feedback and yeah, it makes it fun. So if you've got this palette, pull it out and let's create some looks. Okay, so for look one, I'm actually getting ready to go to a concert. So this is what we're gonna do. I've already done the left eye. And as you can see, I used one of the golden chroma crystal shades. And so it just kind of gives it a little bit more jazz. So I'm gonna point to the shades and walk you through how to create this eye look. So for the first shade, I went in with this one right here. This is the shade Aria and it's a creamy matte. And because these mattes are a little bit more warmer than I typically go for, I just lightly tap once or twice, trying to pick up as little product as possible so that I don't end up with a straight up orange eye. I find that if I go in light handed and like slowly build it up, I can get it's still a warmer eye look, don't get me wrong, but it's not super pigmented. Like you can see just one light tap how much pigment you get. So I found that that method helps make this palette a little bit more approachable for me. Okay, next I want to take just a little bit of this shade here. It's another very similar to the Aria shade, but this is the shade Sandstone. And that's another creamy matte. Just taking a little bit on the brush. And I'm going to concentrate this a little bit more in the crease. I do find that this palette really helps bring out the blue in my eyes. And my top is kind of this more like a greenish blue teal. And we obviously, like this shade in particular, this one right here is Python. Like I could, that matches my shirt perfectly, but I didn't want to get too matchy matchy. And I, I need to play around more with these blues. I'll definitely use the them in another look in this video. But I find that like these teal blues are different than the lighter blue of my eye. And it almost like I feel like sometimes clashes. So I struggle a little bit with those shades. I feel like the gold tones look better with my eye color. And it's a little bit easier to wear with just, you know, normal going out tops. Okay, so I like that base. Now I want to take 
um, this shade right here. It's a metallic, like a dark brown, and it's kind of more neutral leaning compared to all of the gold tones you've got going on here, but I actually really like it. I think it pairs well with the gold tones. It kind of takes it, if we're talking about color tones on a scale of cool, neutral, warm, this shade in particular makes it lean, makes your eye look lean a bit more towards the neutral. Helps prevent it from getting too warm toned. So I'm just taking a little bit of that on this flat shader brush and applying it to the outer corner. Okay, satisfied with that. All right, before we go in with the Chroma Crystal shade, in order to help that shade last a while and not crease on me and just get the most impact out of the shade in general, I'm gonna take a little bit of my NYX glitter glue and dot that on just a little bit, like barely any at all, and dot that along the first half of my eyelid. See just how tacky it is, it's like picking up my eyelid as it starts to dry down. Okay, the Chroma Crystal shade we're going to use is this one right here. This is the shade Kava. That's what it looks like on the finger. Hopefully you can see that's a gold background, so you probably can't. Let me just set the palette down for a minute. Do you see that shade? It's like a true glitter shade. That glitter glue shade also helps prevent any fallout. Okay, perfect. All right, let me take just the brush. I'm not gonna take any more product, but, oops, sorry. Not gonna take any more product, but just gonna kind of blend, use that uh, brush with the dark brown to just blend out that outer corner. Okay. Now I want to take my Wayne Goss 08 brush, uh, the liner brush, and use this dark brown matte. It's a perfect liner shade, perfect outer corner shade. If you want to, you know, not use a metallic, if you just want to keep it matte in the outer corner, that's a perfect one for that. Um, this is the shade Log. And it's also her creamy matte formula. So I'm just gonna stamp this along the upper lash line. Now that that is finished, I wanna take the brush that we used first and um, Use those first, uh, this shade right here, the Atria shade. Just a little bit, not a lot. And run that along the lower lash line. Okay, to finish off the eyes, I want to use Sparks here. It's another Chroma Crystal shade and as you can see here, it's this wider, it's the lightest shade in the palette, but it's white and it has like a slight gold shift to it, but there's no base pigment, much like Kava. There's no actual base pigment. So I find it best used, actually, I'm, I wanna use this all over the lid like as a topper over top of a darker shade and see how that looks. But to be honest with you, most times I just use it in the inner corner, but I will say it is more of that glittery 
um, Karma Crystal formula. And so it, I don't, it's not my favorite. Like I wish, I don't like using Karma Crystals in the inner corner because I feel like you're asking the glitter to transfer into your eyeball, which is never comfortable. But um, I do want to stick to this palette only for this video. And, but the other reason is it's kind of hard to get it to show up because there is no base pigment to it. So I just use it lightly. But I do want to try using it as an actual topper and see how that looks because I feel like I'll like that better. This one's just like really flaky in my opinion. Okay. Looks pretty even to me. Okay. All right. Let me go apply some mascara and I'll be back to show you the finished look. All right. I'm back with the finished look. Let me know what you think of look one. All right. Stay tuned for look two. For look two, I actually already filmed it, but I ran out of storage space and I didn't realize that the video stopped halfway through. So we're going to redo this video. So I wanted to use the blue shades as a pop of color. So that I've used the matte as a liner shade, as you can see. And you can see that it does bring out the blues in my eyes. It's like a really deep teal color. And the other day when I did this look, I actually topped it with the blue shimmer. I wanna do this eye with the blue shimmer, top it with the blue shimmer, and just see how that looks. So we'll get a comparison of what just the matte shade looks like versus what the matte topped with the shimmer looks like. But as you can see, I also use the other special shade in this palette, which is Lime Chrome. It's the Duo Chrome shade and all over the lid, and that's what it looks like. So let's go ahead and recreate uh, this look on the other eye. So first, I'm going in with Aria here. And just with very light colors, because I don't want to be super warm. I'm just going in with a soft wash of this color in the crease using a fluffy brush. This palette I actually bought second hand so I'm not even sure how old it is. I've had it for at least two to three years I'd say and it still performs just fine and who knows how long the other person I bought it off of Poshmark who, who knows how long they had it before me but I still I, th like that's what is great about Natasha Denona's formulas especially her older formula I don't find it ever goes bad all right so that blends effortlessly now I'm going to take a little bit of teak it's a slightly darker matte brown and Again, just one tap of the brush, and I'm gonna focus that a little bit lower in the crease and slightly on the outer corner, just to kind of add some depth. Now, let me go back in with Aria, the first mat we used, and just run that along the lower lash line while I'm thinking about it. I always save the lower lash line for last, but then it's always after I've done the liner. And I actually got a really crisp line and I like the angle, which is, you know, rare to do. If you know, you know. But then I had to do the lower lash line. I'm trying to blend it up into the upper corner and I don't want to mess up the line. So I need to get in the habit of just doing my lower lash line right after my crease. Because I generally always use the same crease color. Although I did see a picture on Instagram the other day of them using this blue shimmer along the lower lash line and that's it. And it was really pretty. So I want to do that for another look as well, but we'll save that for another day. All right, let's do the lid shade. And to make the lime chrome pop and just stick better, um, more opaque, I'm going to use my NYX glitter glue just a little bit. So just a tiny little dot there. All 
All right, using a clean finger, picking up some of lime chrome and applying that here. Like, look how vibrant it is. It's just gorgeous. And definitely a foiled look. Uh, fun fact, I actually wore this shade the other day for the solar eclipse because I thought it was kind of a funky color. I know I'm weird, um, <laughs> but I work in a very conservative environment, so wearing colors like this to work, it's not normal for me, but I felt like the solar eclipse day called for having fun. Okay, so now we are ready for the liner shade. And to do that, um, I'm just using this shade right here, which is called Python. All right. I didn't get this eye as crisp and sharp as I did my left eye, but it'll be fine. All right, for the inner corner, I used this Chroma Crystal shade, which is called Spark. All right, now just to see for myself and to show you what it looks like when you use that teal color as a base and then top it with the blue chroma crystal shade, which is called Aurora. Aurora. Um, I wanna top, use, use that Aurora shade, the sparkly shade on my right eye and then we'll compare. So I'm just using the same liner brush and just packing a little bit of the Aurora shade, let me point to it in case you forgot. That's what this looks like. And it's gonna be a really subtle difference. Like from a distance, you probably couldn't be able to tell. But it just kind of blends in with this lid sparkly shade. Texture wise, at least. All right, so that's what this eye looks like with the matte topped with the shimmer looks like. Can you tell any difference? I can in person. Hopefully the camera is picking up. Honestly, I like both. I kind of like the juxtaposition of textures on this eye. The matte versus the foiled metallic. I think it's pretty. But then, I don't know, this eye is pretty as well. So, just two different looks. Alright, let me go apply mascara and then I'll be back to show you the finished look. Here's the finished look too featuring lime chrome and the blue shades. Let me know which, which eye do you prefer of this look? And as always, leave a comment down below which look in general is your favorite. All right, see you for day three. For the next look, I wanted to keep the top mostly neutral and then show you what I was talking about when I was referencing the blue shimmery shade underneath the lash line. So that's what I've done here. And then I realized I haven't used brass here, which this is like the most metallic shade of the palette, I would say, other than maybe this shade. But it's my favorite metallic of this palette. And it's just a gorgeous, like, just super impactful shade. And so I used it this time all along the inner corner just as a statement. So we'll go ahead and create the look on my right eye. 
So to start out, I'm going in with this shade here, which is sandstone. I believe it's sandstone. Let me double check. Yes, sandstone. So I recently just saw where they posted on Instagram some sneak peeks of Natasha's new palette, which is a midi called the Golden Palette. And it's basically a midi gold with the exception of it's missing a few shades. But there's like at least nine shades that are repeats from this large gold palette. And so if you don't have the gold palette and you're interested in it, might be you might be interested in picking up the midi. I certainly won't be picking up the midi since I already have all of these shades in a large in the large palette. And then one of the shades from the Golden Palette is called Flesh, and that one is in my large star palette. So between them all, I have like all of the shades. The only ones that that palette does not have that I can tell are the Chroma Crystal shades, such as Kava. It did have, sorry, it did have Kava, I noticed. At least that shade name was in that palette. So I think it does have this Chroma Crystal. Did not have Sparks. Um, it looked to be like a, it does have a light shades in there, but I think they're maybe metallic formulas. It does not have these blues. It does not have the Lime Chrome, and it doesn't have this brass. But a lot of these mattes, such as Sand, I believe Sandstone was in there. I know Aria, Log, Alchemist, Teak, and Varus. I believe this one is Varus, yeah. I know at least these were in there. And then Kava, of course. So kind of more like this half of the palette versus that half. Um, but like I say... I certainly don't need so many repeat shades, so I won't be picking it up. If you have the gold, the gold palette, like this gold palette, or one of the dupes, like I hope that you're finding value in these videos. So this is not my first one week one palette. If this is my first video from you guys, welcome. But I've, I try to use the palettes that I have and not be so consumeristic in my um, channel and in my everyday life. And like, like you can see, I've had this palette for years. It hardly looks used. And I think it's really important to pull out what you have and try and recreate looks and dupe what the new releases are because a lot of times it's just, you know, fashion and makeup goes in cycles. So you can recreate the new looks using what you already have. So hopefully you're finding these videos helpful. But the next step I wanted to do, so one of, like when I see makeup looks on Instagram and YouTube, a lot of the makeup artists that I see, they'll go in with a um, pencil liner and then they'll smudge it out and they'll slowly layer that up to where you get a really smoky, smudged out look. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not the best at that technique, but I wish I was. So what better way than to practice on YouTube? So I've done it on this eye. So basically I'm just using just a regular brown pencil liner. This one happens to be from Charlotte Tilbury. It's her classic eye powder pencil in the shade Classic Brown. It just came in a kit, so that's why I'm using it. And I'm, I'm not being precise by any means. I'm just going to flick the liner roughly along the upper lash line. And you can kind of see it's more like dashed lines versus a solid line. That's okay. I'm going to go in with a, a pencil to start smudging and connecting it. And hopefully you can see, obviously I'm not going to create like 20 different looks here, but you can use bits and pieces of each of these looks that I'm creating in order to use your own. So like, for instance, I might do only this dark brown like this top minus this inner corner and the lower lash line I might do that for like an everyday work look or just more natural look I should say but then you can ramp amp it up by adding this inner corner if you want to go even further add the pop of blue hopefully these looks inspire you in some way 
So really what I'm doing here, I'm just taking again the liner brush I always use, Wayne Goss 08 or the rougher equivalent, I forget that number, it's 20 something. And just slowly doing that. Smudging it. Okay, um, I forgot. I'm so used to only using like these mid-tone mattes in the crease, I forgot that I actually also brought that shade down like all over the lid. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll proceed with the liner. Okay, um, using that same brush, I'm going to take a little bit of Log, which is the deep dark brown matte perfect liner shade or just deepening outer corner shade. It's really a workhorse. And I'm just going over that cream liner. Not super precise. Again, we're gonna smudge it out. I have to remind myself of that because I'm just so used to like doing liner looks like this where it's super sharp or I try to get it as super sharp as possible but these smudged out looks to me are so pretty. Okay, so for an everyday look, I would probably leave the top like this, put a little bit of this uh, mid-tone um, crease shade that we used in the crease along the lower lash line and call it good. And this would be like an everyday neutral matte look. But like I said, we're going to smudge it out even further, make it a little more smoky. So I just tapped once into the sandstone shade, which is this mid-tone. And I'm just going to lightly, kind of messily brush it over the lid and not caring if I grab a little bit of the dark brown liner shade, that's okay. If I grab too much, like you can see here, it's perfect. We'll go in and if we need to add a little, little more dark brown, we can. Oh, sorry, I dropped my brush. Just kind of running it everywhere to help smudge. All right, so I'm missing a little bit here. I just wanna run it back and forth. And just kind of messily smudge this line. Okay, I don't know that those angles are the same, but it's fine for this. Okay, now I want to take a little bit of the blue shimmer, which is called Aurora, right here. Take a little bit of that on a flat brush and just run that along the lower lash line. Now you got to be careful with this shade because there, you can get fallout and blue fallout on your under eyes. We'll just bring out all the blue under eye darkness you never knew you had or you do know that you have. So just go sparingly, you can always add more. But I'm just adding that right underneath the lower lash line. And slowly bringing it up to connect to the upper liner. Okay, now let's brighten up the inner corner. It's a little more dark than I like with the dark blue underneath the lash line. So let's add brass, which is this metallic here. Let's add that in the inner corner. This is kind of a flaky shade, so you don't need much because 
even though it's flaky once it hits your skin, it can spread. And I'm going a little bit heavy handed for an inner corner just to kind of fit the messy theme that we're going for. So just bringing that slightly up where the crease starts here and then on the lower bringing it just slightly like in this region. Normally I only stick to the inner tear duct. Okay, so that's a nice smoky look. Um, very, very sultry for me. But let me go apply mascara and I'll be back to show you the finished look. All right, so look three, we have a mostly neutral eye with a pop of metallic along the inner corner and a pop of blue along the lower lash line. So what do you think of look three? The next look, look number four, is this dramatic gold eye. One of the most impactful shades in this palette is this middle shade right here. It's called Oro. And it's a metallic shade and it is insanely pigmented. Like I mentioned, I'm not even sure how old this palette is. It's at least three years old. And just look at that. It is as soft and buttery as if it was just made yesterday. It is super impactful. Um, so I wanted to use this shade. I'll be honest, this shade is like a very yellow orange gold. And for that reason, I don't really tend to gravitate towards the orangier golds, but I do think it, obviously orange on the color wheel pairs really well with blue eyes. So, I mean, I think this look turned out pretty, but for some of the more, um, not scary shades, but shades that are outside of my comfort zone, I like to go to makeup artists and particularly Instagram to look for inspiration on how to use shades like this. And Natasha Denona herself is a great resource. So I don't know if any of you guys are like me, but I'll within Instagram you can create list and save different posts to list. And so I have started creating a list for each eyeshadow palette that I like or that I own and save posts accordingly of looks when I come across them or I'll just search by hashtag if I'm looking for inspiration. And so when I first got this Natasha Denona gold palette, I went through and found a ton of different looks that I liked, saved them into that list. And then anytime I pull this palette out, if I'm stumped or can't come up with something, I can reference that list and you know get ideas. And so I'm gonna insert footage of the list that I have and what I wanted to create was some of the more deeper tones that I've created. You can see there's a few options here of primarily using the log shade to create that deep, dark depth. And then I wanted to focus on a gold shade. So some of them you'll see I think are using the shade Oro, uh, the metallic that I ended up using today. And then the last one I show you is, I'm almost positive, is using that brass shade, which is gorgeous. To be honest, I love the tone, undertone of brass better than I do Oro. Brass has more of that true gold, kind of greenish, not, not really green, but it, it's more on that spectrum versus Oro being the orangey gold. Um, but because I hadn't used Oro yet at all, I wanted to use that in today's video just to see how it did. So I ended up choose, choosing the post by Natasha Denona, and I'll insert what that look, look looks like on the model. Okay, so you just saw the model look. This is what I created. There weren't detailed instructions in the text in the comment of that photo and I couldn't find that look on Natasha's YouTube page either so I was just going based off what the tones what, what I think she used based off that picture and so here's what I created and we'll go ahead and create it on my right eye 
So the first shade I'm going in with is the shade I've used for almost all of these uh, looks so far, and that is Aria, the mid-tone matte. And I'm just going in lightly and focusing that in the crease again and bringing it slightly up. You can see on this eye, it's almost touching my eyebrow, not quite, but it's a little bit higher than like directly in my crease. So we're gonna create a gradient look here. And I'm bringing that a little bit further inwards towards my nose than I normally do. She, the model or the angle of that photo lets you see like this area, the inner part of the nose as well. And you can see that she, she brings that quite far inwards. So we're gonna do the same. Okay, next I'm taking a little bit of teak which is the slightly mid-tone, deeper mid-tone, and doing that mostly like here. And I wanna be careful, so I tend to hold the brush like in the middle, which applies a more firm pressure. But if you hold the brush towards the end, it helps you only use the very tip of the brush and give a softer wash. It seems to blend easier that way. And so for this look where, in particular, where I'm wanting a gradient, I find that that helps. That was one pass. Let's tap in once more. And I'll start more in the inner half here. And again, not minding so far, not minding that I bring it in so far like this. Okay, now we're gonna get into the dark brown matte log. Right here. So to do that, I'm gonna take a more dense brush. This just happens to be one that I have on hand. This is the Morphe E18. It's, I don't recommend it from the standpoint that the quality is quite rough. The bristles are a little scratchy, but for this purpose, it's, it's okay. So I'm gonna, because this shade is so dark and pigmented, I'm gonna just build this up. So I tapped in once and I'm starting in the outer crease. And I'm just gonna really start blending this, mostly in the crease. I'm not gonna do swirling motions. It's really just windshield wiper back and forth motions. And for this, I am bringing it all the way inwards. Okay, I'm going back in with the brush I had originally just to kind of help bring out those mid-tones again. All right, now taking the Morphe Dense Brush again and I'm going to take, actually, sorry, I used a different brush. Let me go get that brush real quick. So normally I do use the crease brushes for my lower lash line, but because this brush is so, it's quite large and I want to go in with the dark brown, I want to use a flat brush here that's quite thin so that we can also build this gradient on the lower lash line. So I'm ta first taking the dark brown shade log and just tapped in once and I'm going to run that directly like in the lash line and can try to connect that with the top out here. Okay, next I'm taking the darker mid-tone shade, Teak and running that slightly under where we placed log. A little bit more. 
and finally taking the lightest toned shade called Aria and placing that even further down here. Okay, so that's pretty good there. I'm not gonna bother with the glitter glue. I'm just gonna take, because the shade is so foiled, I'm just gonna take it on my finger and start placing that. Like, seriously, look at that. That is ridiculous. Okay, so we're just gonna take this all over the lid. It's literally like a bar of gold. Liquid gold. So if you noticed in the Instagram photo, there's a stark difference between this metallic and the dark brown. So I'm not going to worry about trying to blend this shade into the crease. We're just going to let the difference in texture and color shine. And it'll blend up into the crease as well. You can see I've had this on for like probably only like five, ten minutes. And it's already starting to transfer a little bit. But that's okay. Okay, now they go quite dark with the liner and it's black. Now I had a, I had the NYX Epic Ink Eyeliner and I never really use liquid eyeliners at all, but that's a brush tip eyeliner. And I remember it being pretty good when I first got it. However, I haven't used it in a really long time. And when I just opened it, like there was a ton of the liquid at the tip, like it was bubbling. And then one of the bristles had bent and so it was always funky and like to the edge. Anyways, I was going to use it. I wiped off the excess onto a paper towel and was going to use the brush anyway since it clearly ha still has product in it. But it was transfer. It was doing that thing where it feathers into the microscopic lines of your eyelid and you no longer have a precise line. I can't stand that. It's so annoying. I don't remember it doing that. So I don't know if it's just because it's old or if you've tried that Epic Ink Liner, is that just the way it is now? Um, I'm tempted to go back to the tattoo, the Kat Von D tattoo liner. I That was the first liquid liner I ever used and I remember loving it. But that's been so many years ago, I don't know if it's still any good. But all that to say was I completely ruined it. But what I ended up doing instead of, or j just on top of that NYX liner since I already did this, is I just went in to a regular black shade and used my trusty liner brush. And for this, I'm just going in, this is an old BH Cosmetics palette. There's just a standard black matte here. And I'm just going to try to create that sharp liner effect, liquid liner effect. And they go more elongated, so like kind of straight out. So instead of like going up for a lifted look, we're going to go extend it out into more of an elongated look. Okay, and now, because I've dipped in several times, I know there's a lot of black pigment still in this brush, so I'm just gonna take whatever's left on this brush and connect that to the bottom lash line just to deepen it up even further. And I'm running it precisely like in the lashes. And now to finish the look, I'm taking these shade Sparks and applying that along the inner corner. Okay, let me go add some mascara to even it out and I'll be back to show you the finished look. 
Mascara is applied and look four is finished. What do you think? For me, this is a really dramatic eye look, but it does make, I feel like the darker colors really make that orangey gold shade Oro really pop. So let me know if you've tried this look or if you like it. This is look number four. See you tomorrow for the fifth and final look. I wanna do, really focus on the mattes primarily and really do a really soft, kind of blown out, easy, everyday, natural eye. All right, so I will see you tomorrow. Welcome. The fifth and final look, I wanted to use mostly matte shades, and so I just created this really easy, everyday eye look. And I tried to, so for the liner, I wanted to do a smudgy liner look, and so I went in with the Charlotte Tilbury Brown Pencil Liner first and was going to top it with Varus, which is a shimmer, just to kind of give a shimmery liner effect, but it ended up, it did not look good. It was kind of going on patchy and I don't know, it just didn't look great. So I ended up just topping this eye with Log, the dark brown matte. And so I'm just, for the right eye, I'm just going to do the pencil liner and then top that with the matte and just leave Varus out altogether. So this is a mostly matte look. I was thinking I might top like do a little pop of shimmer with this sparks shade. I think I mentioned in the first look I was curious how this looks by itself like um, just a topper and then other than that I was thinking we could do one maybe like brass or even this shade Aurum as a pop of gold inner corner. I haven't decided yet but I may do that in the end, but I'm just going to speed through, point to the shades as I use it. I won't be talking through and that way this video is getting really long, but hopefully this look will go pretty quickly since it's so easy. So let's get started. Okay, so it's literally as easy as that. This is a beautiful all matte look. I think I do want to top it, like take a little bit of Sparks, which is this shade, the white Chroma Crystal here. Take a little bit of that and just pop it kind of as a halo eye directly in the center of the lid. Okay, let's go for it. Let's add Aurum as an inner corner. Aurum is the shade right here. It probably to you might look like the least interesting one. It's kind of in the pan looks flat, but I have found that this is the perfect gold all over the lid. I don't think I've ever used it as an inner corner, so we'll see how that goes. But don't underestimate that shade if you have this palette because it looks really pretty. So since it is a deeper gold, a little bit deeper gold, I'm just going very lightly. And really it's just not even about the color, it's just to add some shine there, reflectivity. Okay, I like it. I'm gonna go apply curl my lashes and apply mascara and I'll be back to show you the finished look. Here is finished look five. Let me know what you think. So this is a really pretty easy everyday eye for me. I did do my liner a little bit differently. So I brought it a little bit lower than I normally do 
and that allowed me to seamlessly connect the bottom lash line into it to kind of do like a V'd out liner effect. And I like how it looks, so let me know what you think of look five. So let me know which look one, two, three, four, or five is your favorite. And if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing, like the video as well, and I will continue to make my way throughout my eyeshadow palette collection using these one week one palette um, videos. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.